The situation in Yemen, which has been subject to a multiple-year war waged by Saudi Arabia, is increasingly growing tense. Things specifically started to spiral out of control when the country's former president, Ali Abdullah Saleh, made a surprise overture towards Saudi Arabia. Saleh announced that he was open to talks with Saudi Arabia and ready to turn the page if Riyadh and its allies lift the blockade and halt airstrikes on Yemen. This change in position literally put an alliance that he had created with Yemen's Houthi and Sorullah fighters against the Saudis on the verge of split. Many believe that Saleh's move was part of a plot devised by Saudi Arabia to create a rift inside Yemeni forces that have been successfully resisting the war since March 2015. I think it's a very good possibility that this has been caused by Saudi Arabia to try to divide the forces inside of Yemen. One of their greatest strengths is their ability to work together while the state is in a, a very weak situation. The, their cooperation has enabled them to be able to hold out against the Saudi onslaught since 2015. And I think that it's nothing short of a correct tactical choice on the part of Saudi Arabia to try to sow dissent within the various forces resisting their occupation. Meanwhile, Houthi leader Abdul Malik Al Houthi describes Saleh's stance as a betrayal. Al Houthi said the former president must reassess his policies that he said were only to the benefit of Yemen's enemies. Al Houthi also said Saleh was trying to stage a coup against the Yemeni alliance, adding that his actions would lead to nothing but chaos and instability. He said a plot that the former president was pushing forward was the last part of the forces of aggression through which he said they were trying to facilitate the occupation of Yemen. I definitely do think that it's a benefit for the Saudis to break up this kind of role. Uh, the trying to wield influence in the country has been a very difficult trying to get foreign forces to uh, manipulate certain organizations within the country. Uh, the breaking down of this, of the alliance between the various groups, uh, definitely does make things easier for the Saudis and their allies to try to wield some kind of influence in the country. Meanwhile, the Houthi Ansarullah fighters said on Sunday they had hit a nuclear plant in Abu Dhabi with a cruise missile. The UAE later denied that claim. This nevertheless indicates the ability of the resistance movement to target the hostile forces that have waged a deadly campaign against Yemen over the past two years. The UAE is the most serious partner to the Saudis in the war on Yemen, and it's no wonder why the Houthis have attempted to retaliate for the Emirates' participation in the Saudi-led military campaign against their country. This sends a very serious message to the Saudis and their allies that the Yemenis are certainly willing to take very serious action against the people who have been butchering their country since 2015. I mean, the attack on a nuclear facility, even one that is merely under construction, is very serious and sends a definite strong message. I think the Yemenis are showing that they're willing to make more and more strategic and dangerous attacks against their enemies in order to maintain the very fragile situation that they have. The rising tensions in Yemen come at a time that global institutions like the United Nations are warning over the deteriorating humanitarian conditions in the country. This could put extra pressure on the domestic groups that are fighting the Saudi-led alliance. Nobody may have been happier over the ongoing situation in Yemen than the rulers in Riyadh, but they will sooner or later have to open their eyes and see the costs of the war they have waged on their neighbor a war that the world is already criticizing because it was based on an empty cause.